Welcome to the HCMTV video blog. I'm Chuck Schaefer, and the purpose of this video blog post is to further explore how and why gamification is presenting a unique opportunity to HR and business leaders, and more so, share some research facts and salient information so that evaluators can determine if this is the right business opportunity for them to examine further. To begin the evaluation of the gamification business opportunity, you need to first have at least a basic understanding of what gamification is and what it isn't. The goals of gamification are simply to achieve higher levels of engagement, influence behaviors, facilitate outcomes, and stimulate innovation by applying gaming techniques and mechanics in non-gaming contexts, such as to help solve organizational problems or aid specific performance objectives. And especially when it comes to HR, the overarching reason that gamification is being considered and adopted is because it works by making what are often monotonous processes or applications more engaging. In fact, research from the Pew Center highlights that gamification processes impact employee engagement by actually improving creativity, learning, participation, and motivation. And given the fact that engaged employees on the whole tend to be 25 to 30 percent more productive, the allure of gamification is easily understood. What's not so easily understood is where gamification processes in the HR world are best leveraged. In the recruitment realm, for example, companies like NAC are using gamification to gauge cognitive skills such as pattern recognition, risk aversion, emotional intelligence, and adaptability, a technique that MIT has indicated provides huge advantages over traditional recruitment tools. The main avenue for these gamified recruitment applications is currently social networking sites such as Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. However, expect these gamified apps to make their way into company websites, blogs, and online company managed communities in the near term. Likewise, gamification is also being used on the fringes for common HR objectives such as employee motivation and retention. In fact, a quick look across the pond to activities like the UK's Idea Street shows that games are being used to crowdsource company improvements and innovation. Interestingly, the only hard and fast area within HR and human capital management where gamification appears to be really sticking and widely adopted is in learning and development, an area that has already seen majority adoption of gamification principles for some time. In fact, with 70% of major employers already utilizing interactive software and game concepts to train employees, game simulation within the functional HR area of learning is now pushing the envelope in terms of what gamification can deliver. For example, the U.S. Department of Defense is using game theory to create highly simulated environments, allowing learners to take part in scenarios that would be too costly or dangerous to perform in real-world conditions. Of course, these examples are only the tip of the iceberg in terms of what gamification can accomplish, which is why uptake rates are so widely varied. As a whole, though, the HR industry's pace of adoption is accelerating. For one, M2 research estimates a massive uptick in gamification projects over the next several years, jumping from a $100 million market spend to just shy of $3 billion by 2016. Gartner predicts that by 2015, over 50% of all businesses will be managing innovation activities through gamification, and fully 70% of the Global 2000 will employ game tactics with at least one gamified application. And these trends aren't just being furthered by small-time emerging vendors. As an example, Salesforce.com's recent acquisition of Ripple was largely predicated on the promise of gamification, and even software giants like SAP and Oracle are aggressively piloting gamification applications and platforms. But as with most leading edge technologies, gamification is not without its detractors or flaws. In fact, more than a handful of the CEA CEOs we've spoken to reference the fact that while gamification and HR is an interesting concept, without more robust tools and applications, increased adoption isn't likely to come about in their respective organizations a perception that greatly affects the level of support that this process receives from the C-suite. In large part, the issue at hand here, and one that we hear echoed time and again by senior business leaders, is that translating the concept of gamification to employees' actual activities and business processes 
in a way that engages the employee and actually results in improved staff pro productivity still seems elusive. By comparison, other skeptics have more pointedly laid the issue at the feet of the C-suite itself, indicating that far too often HR gamification is simply viewed as yet another social tool to distract staff rather than engage them. Regardless though, the fact of the matter is that this is a growing technology and it has a long way to go before consensus is reached on its appropriateness, let alone its effectiveness. If you're an innovator in your organization, or a business leader seeking to explore this strategy and enabling technology further, here are the three main things you need to consider further about gamification in HR. First, while current research may support the theory that gamification can have a major impact in the workplace, organizations still need to be cognizant of the fact that this tactic of leveraging game models is not universally accepted by all employees. Just as we know that people learn differently, so too will their motivation be different to achieve specific gamified objectives. Second, in order for gamification to be successful, it cannot be simply a grafted solution. Rather, leveraging gaming effectively means adopting a concerted strategy, incorporating the gamification concept into other enterprise applications like learning, recruiting, retention, and performance wherever possible rather than simply relegating gamification to siloed, standalone apps. Third, as Gartner proposes, and other experts tend to agree, the four keys to an effective gamification strategy are goals and roles must be clear if users are going to remain empowered to achieve objectives. The narrative and interface has to be compelling in order for engagement to happen. Feedback has to be delivered at an accelerated pace in order for engagement to remain active and the task of the game itself should relate to short-term goals that are challenging but achievable. And with that, I'll leave this synopsis in this HCM TV video blog complete.